think this view is okay. I can see the cat post. I hope you guys don't mind a cat post right here on the floor. Maybe I can move a little bit more this way so you guys just aren't staring at a cat post in the background, you know? I think this, I think this might be good. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Tomorrow is New Year's Eve, so I have decided to sit down and film a chatty repot today. It's gonna be very chatty. So for those that don't care too much about all the chattiness, I'm sorry, this may not be the video for you. I am gonna be doing some plant care in this video as I chat, but I was just kind of reflecting on this year and everything that's happened and kind of my plans and thoughts for next year. So I figured I would just kind of maybe introduce myself for those that are new, maybe tell you a bit more about me and my life and all that and kind of how I'm feeling about certain things. I'm like someone who likes to talk and vent and get things off my chest sometimes. I just feel like it helps and I just feel like chatting and I feel like you guys are my friends and I can talk to you. So that is what we are gonna do for today's video. So I hope you don't mind a long chatty repot. So I will start out with the plant that we're gonna be repotting. This is a philodendron and it is a Burl Marks fantasy and I have a couple props in here as well. This plant has a long journey with me. I don't think I've ever really posted this plant or talked about this plant. It's been in my collection since last year. I had one big original leaf on this plant and that was like the main original leaf. And this plant actually did end up with thrips over the summer in my Ikea cabinet. So that big propagated leaf I ended up getting rid of and a lot of the new growth I completely chopped off. I did cut this plant several times before and I was thinking about like making the pot more full because this plant was literally just one big leaf and a long vine, that's all it was. And every time it grew, it like grew pretty fast and I could not get it on a pole in time. I didn't honestly know what kind of pole I wanted for this plant or what my plan was really even. I have three in here that I'm going to be potting up as well as a cutting here. And I think I have just one cutting here. So I'm gonna combine all these and I'm gonna put it on a thickly pole. So clear plastic pole and I'm gonna have them climb up that way. This plant has an unusual um, leaf shape and kind of texture to it. It's one that I don't know how large the leaves will get eventually, but this plant has to be supported because if it doesn't get supported, those leaves just grow so small. This is not a trailing plant by any means. So this definitely wants to climb, but I'll show you kind of what it looks like up close. This is a new leaf. So this is why I wanna get this plant on a pole really soon because it's gonna start, it's already pushing a new leaf. And once this plant starts growing, it like dramatically, decreases in leaf size. And it has this like dark green kind of sheen to it. And I have a couple, so I have three props. These are gonna push a second leaf soon. The, and this is in fluval stratum. And you can see all of those roots in there. This is very rooted. And I have a cutting in moss. I don't know if this one's really done anything, but I'm gonna check it out. This was in my prop box. And this was in my prop box as well. This one is just in moss as well, but it has um, a leaf and then this is the new growth, I think, from that leaf. So we are gonna uncover the moss and uncover the ones that are in fluval and we are gonna build our thickly pole and put these up. So we're gonna have five vines growing up the thickly pole. I think it's gonna look good once it gets climbing. But I have my mix here, I have my fertilizer, I have my moss, I have my water. I have my bin, I am ready to go. We are gonna get our hair up and then I'm gonna start chatting. <laughs> so happy new year. You guys will be seeing this probably on New Year's Day. So which is, no wait, you guys will probably see this on January 2nd. Yeah, cause today's the 30th. So tomorrow is the 31st, which is Saturday. And then Sunday is gonna be January 1st. So today is Friday. Yeah, you guys will probably see this Monday after the new year. So a happy new year. Welcome to 2023. And I'm kind of excited for 2023. I'm excited 
but I just, there's so much unknown that I kind of want to talk about too. Okay, I just had to fix my hair again. <laughs> but yes, we will see where this video leads and what all I end up talking about. And we'll just kind of go from there. I need to get my moss soaking first. I have a little tray of water and I need to build build my thickly pole. This is thickly's normal pull the four squares across. I'm gonna pour some of this moss in here. I don't know where all my containers went. This is a very small container. But we don't need a lot of moss for these poles. All right, so we are gonna let that get started here. And I don't have a rag or anything. That is okay. So I think I will, maybe if you're new here and you don't know much about me, I think I will kind of give you a rundown on all that. And we'll kind of talk about some other things. I think I'll save like my plans for next year at the end maybe. But if you're new here, so I've started my YouTube channel a little over a year now. So it is currently the end of December, 2022. And I started this channel in September when I quit my nursing job of 2021. So I've been a like cardiology bedside nurse for the past like 10 years. And I left my job last September because I was really stressed and just burnt out with the pandemic. I just, I just couldn't do it anymore. And I didn't feel safe. I just, I just woke up dreading work, dreading my every day-to-day -day life. I just needed, I just needed a break. So I ended up leaving and just taking some time off because we were moving here to Savannah. So we live, we moved here to Savannah in April of this, of this year. So we've been here for what, eight months. Our closing kept getting delayed and pushed back with COVID and the delays just on everything. The house took so much longer to get completed. And even during closing, like, things still were not completed, but we closed, you know, just because it's been, it was like almost two years from when we first started this house process here to us being able to close. I think it was like, maybe like 18 to 20 months, something like that. It was a long time. Come sit beside me. Go on, come sit beside me. Come on, come on, beep, beep. there you go. So yeah, by the time, so, so I wanted to take some time off before we moved and I did not think we were gonna be moving by April. I thought, we thought for sure we were gonna be in by the end of the year. Last year, they told us, initially they told us August and then it got pushed back to like November, December timeframe. So we thought 100% almost we would be in by the new year. Turns out that they said, no, maybe January. And then it wasn't until April, we closed, I actually think we closed the end of March. It was like March 27th, 28th, something like that. And, then, and so we finally moved a week after we closed in April. This child. And so, yeah, that's what, so what brought us to Savannah is we just wanted a change. We lived in North Carolina for, well, I lived in North Carolina the past 18 years. I'm originally from Ohio and I grew up in Ohio, I was born in Ohio. I lived there for 18 years and moved to North Carolina when I was 18. I ended up meeting my husband. We met online and back then it wasn't as common as I feel like it is now. And I ended up moving down this way after I graduated high school and we moved and we lived together and it just ended up working out. I ended up starting nursing school when I was I took a couple years off. I ended up starting nursing school when I was 20 and I worked at like various places. I worked in a mall, a retail, I worked at a video store and I did a restaurant for a little while. And yeah, then I went to nursing school and I worked at a video store all throughout nursing school. And then nursing school was kind of, kind of rough just because I pretty much had to work full time. And it was not easy by any means. It was not a cakewalk. Child, come on. I know you want cuddles right now, but come on. Yeah. And 
And so I ended up graduating and I think it took me about four years to graduate and finish nursing school. And at that time I was working, you know, the whole time. Yeah, and so I finished actually, so my last year of nursing school, I worked, I left the video store and I worked as a nursing assistant my like final year just to get experience in the hospital setting. And then once I graduated, I just transferred over as like an RN. Yeah, I worked as a nurse up until last year and just the pandemic was just, it just did it for me. And so after having all this time off, I kind of, I started my plant account in like on Instagram in January of last year. And then I started my YouTube that fall. And then my account started to grow as I put more time into my Instagram account because I, I knew I wanted to start YouTube. I actually wanted to start a beauty channel. I was really into makeup and all that. And like, I was probably like 27 at the time, 28. And this is the bottom of the poll. Oh yeah, so my account started to grow and I kind of focused on just starting a YouTube channel for plants. Cause I was just, I, plants saved me from, from just so much. I was just so down and depressed and just hated. I don't know. I just felt like every day I, wait, I would wake up and I just was not happy. Like just, I don't know, just the pandemic and the way everything was, I just was not in a good place. And I got into houseplants like early pandemic. It was the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. And during the pandemic, I just focused on, like plants was my stress reliever. So I just took care of plants, collected plants, grew plants. I was in a plant group. And I started my social media and was active, very active on there. And my account started growing. I do want to do some lives and I want, that's like a goal for next year is I want to either do lives on YouTube, on Instagram, just to kind of break out of my shell a little bit more. So you guys can see, I guess, a different side other than just these videos. I'm going to launch her. I'm literally going to launch her. So that is a goal I wanna try and do. I think if I do it for like maybe 20, 30 minutes at a time and do them here and there, I will get more comfortable with going live. Cause I do think it is nice to be able to do that. But I am such like a shy introverted person. Some people may not know that and say, and may like see me on my stories and just, they don't understand how I am, but I am just like on the inside, I'm like very introverted and very shy and quiet. I've been that way my entire life. And I don't think that's ever gonna change. I've never been someone outgoing. I've never just, I don't know. I always, in school growing up, I was always the quiet person. I just stayed to myself a lot. Yeah, fast forward to now and my account has grown. I have, I think 118,000 followers on Instagram now, which is just crazy. It, I never imagined my account growing to what it is now. And then my YouTube family here, I just, I don't know. It's crazy to think that a little over a year ago, I started from basically nothing and look at where I'm at now. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm just so thankful for all of you guys and for all of you that watch my videos and engage with me and, leave nice comments and messages. I honestly, like you guys are just the absolute sweetest and I love every single one of you guys because if I didn't have you guys watching my videos, I wouldn't be here. And it just means so much to me that you guys enjoy my content and it just makes me so happy because I'm really happy to film and record videos and make content for you guys. Do you see her? She's so bad. Look at her eating that plastic. Here, maybe we can play with a piece of sphagnum moss. Here, looky child. <laughs> She's so crazy. She's taking it on the floor now. <laughs> this is what it's like trying to film with cats, you guys. I swear, every time I break out the camera, a cat has to come on film every time. So yeah, I'm just like, I'm really happy to be here and I love doing YouTube. 
Now I will say, it's kind of like another thing that I want to dive in and talk about is kind of social media in a whole. That's like a whole nother, a whole nother area or realm that I just am still kind of figuring out. The plant community has been like so supportive. I feel like most of the time, I kind of just stay to myself because I do feel that it is a little bit, well, social media can be a little bit clicky in a way. And I'm like, my birthday's next month, I'm gonna be 37 and I just feel like so much older. I, I don't know, I just feel, <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I don't really belong, I guess. I'm just like, I'm just, just gonna stick to myself and just focus on that in my account. I don't really, I don't know, I'm not a drama person and I don't like to be involved in anything. So I just try to just stick to myself and that's all I can do. But if you're someone who's thinking about growing on social media and starting a channel, definitely go for it because even if you are the most shy and quiet person, even like how I am, you know, you, you don't know until you try. It's hard putting yourself out there in front of a camera and in front of people because People only see like one side of you, right? They only see what you are choosing to put out there on the internet. They don't know like what goes on behind closed doors. I don't know, it's hard to be, it's hard when you get hate. And I didn't really get hate until my account started growing a little bit more. And you know, it did like affect me in the beginning. I'm not gonna lie because no one wants to read negative things about you. And I still get hate. Sometimes if I'm feeling up to it, I'll respond. But most of the time I just ignore and I'll just um, block people because there's just, there's just no need for it. I would never just leave negative comments on someone else's page or just like, I don't know, to just, to just do that is just so wrong and I don't understand. Like I understand having a difference of opinion if you don't agree with something that I do or say, like that's totally fine. But to, but when you go to go out of your way to make someone feel bad about themselves or to critique things about them, that's like a personal attack. There's no need for that. And that's something that you kind of have to, like over time, you just learn to kind of ignore those kind of comments and you just, I don't know, I just think it's kind of funny now that I'll just, I just ignore most of the time <laughs> because I, I try not to engage because they're looking for that engagement, right? They're looking for you, they're looking to upset you. That was their entire goal. So if you don't respond, then they don't get what they initially intended, you know, so. That's all you can do. So just know that it will happen. You can't be perfect to everyone. You're always gonna be doing something wrong, no matter what. And you're gonna find those people who love you and who are like your people, so to say, and it just takes time. And those who enjoy your content and you know wanna see you succeed and do well, those are gonna be like your biggest fans and supporters. So you just have to focus on just yourself and just the positive and that's all you can really do. But I would say overall, it's been like a very positive experience. I wanna talk about, I mean, let me close this real quick cause it's really loud. trying to get her to jump down the whole time. <laughs> All right, so that is my pool. And I left a little room at the bottom for soil. So that's what it looks like. I filled it, I went ahead and filled it to the top because this plant is gonna be climbing in no time. And I'm finding like filling them to the top is just easier for me. I don't know. I'm finding the ones that I have filled just a little bit is getting kind of annoying because the plants just grow so fast. So. That is perfect. So yeah, the, oh, I need to get a pot. I'll be right back. I didn't grab a, I'm gonna grab a clear pot. I think this is a standard six inch pot. I got like a multi pack on Amazon. It has different sizes. So I think this is a six inch. It looks like a six inch. So it's just a clear pot and it will fit this perfectly. I'm gonna undo the moss from these. So what was I saying? I keep getting rudely interrupted by this child. <laughs> um, well, I'm just gonna kind of lead into like, I know I wanna talk about like 
brand deals and companies. I do want to touch on that about like with your account and if you are interested in starting account. So I'll kind of go into that. I've had my YouTube for a year and I haven't done any sponsorships, paid sponsorships. It could be just because I think it's more so me than anything because I had, I don't know, I'm just finding companies aren't wanting to pay you for promoting. They just want to offer you free product and they just expect you to work for free. And I just, I'm not going to do that. And it's kind of like disappointing in a way when you, these same companies will go around to see who will promote their product for free. And when you see people promoting them and making like reels or just like, I don't know. And you know that they just did it for the product. And if that's what they want to do, like by all means, I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of ruining it for the rest of us in a way because the same companies reach out to me and they want to gift me product, but they want me to make this content for them in exchange. And that's something like I adamantly refuse to do. I initially, when I was like a micro influencer, I had like 10 to 15,000. I did do, I did two companies. I'm not going to name them. I made some content in exchange for the product. And one of these companies a year later, this was last month, I was watching a YouTube video and an advertisement came up with my reel that I did for this company. Now, mind you, this company did not ask me to make a reel. They sent me the product, you know, just to send me free product. And they're like, hey, you know, if you, they didn't really say to promote them, but in my eyes, I was just being nice. So I made a reel just using their product. And I don't, I don't want to say too much to give the, like the company away. And, you know, just to be nice. And so I tagged them in the reel, you know, just so that they would see, you know, that I tagged them, you know, maybe in the future they would like pay me to do something. And so I would say it, maybe later that day or sometime, or maybe it was a, actually it was a couple days later because I was mad that I tagged them and they didn't like my post or comment or anything. And this reel was, this was like a year ago. So reels just came out and this reel got like 75,000 views and it really like did well. And so a couple days later, they finally like liked it and commented on it. And they asked me for the reel. They're like, um, can we like use your reel on our page? And at this time I was, I didn't really know much about brand partnerships and like I was slowly getting into realizing that you can actually get paid for promoting product. Like companies will pay you not only in product, but pay you money to promote them. And I was slowly like learning more and more about, I had come across a page that was talking about this. And so I still slowly started learning like what I probably shouldn't have accepted that free product. I probably should have gotten paid, you know, to promote them. And so I said, no, I did not want them to use my reel because I created that reel out of the goodness of my heart to promote their product, which probably got them a lot of sales. And so after that, some time or whatever, you know, fast forward to now, they have used that reel. They must have downloaded it or they use some 30 third party app to remove the Instagram logo and they had used my reel advertising their product a year later. Needless to say, when I saw that ad come up, I was so upset. I didn't know how to react. I was stunned, like just stunned. I, I had not had any communication with this company or nothing. So I went to Instagram and I messaged them immediately. I'm like, I am going to send you a invoice. I couldn't think of what it was. I am going to send you an invoice for content usage rights. If you do not remove this ad, if you are going to use my reel in, an, in a paid advertisement, mind you, they are paying to run this advertisement. Don't you drop that. They are running this advertisement and they're, they're paying for it. And I'm like, if you're going to use me, my image, my idea in a paid advertisement, you are going to pay me for that. I did not give you usage rights. We did not sign any kind of contract, nothing. I just can't believe they did that. And so they just like 
basically lied to me saying that someone who used to work for them doesn't work with them anymore and they said something about like we'll have to look back through documentation and I'm like there is no documentation there's we, I signed nothing you just sent me product you didn't even ask me to make a reel I did that reel out of like the goodness of my heart basically for sending me a $20 product. Mind you, this is a, a $20.19.99 product. Things like this kind of leave a bad taste in my mouth working with brands. And I just feel like I, I have bills. Like, I, mind you, I'm 37. It's just me and my husband. And I'm not making much money at all. I mean, I do get some money from YouTube and it's not nearly enough to make a living out of. And it's kind of something like my husband and I were talking about because, you know, what I was making as a nurse was at least somewhat decent, but now I'm not like, I'm not making anything nearly like that. And so I can't like afford to live on my own just with what I'm doing now. There's just, there's just no way I'm not making enough. A lot of like influencers get paid their money through brand collaborations and I haven't done brand collaborations. I could have done some brand collaborations, but they're just not willing to pay hardly anything. I'm not going to make like a full dedicated video for you to pay me 50 to hundred bucks and do all this work. It takes so much work and time to edit videos, to film them. Like I, I'm someone who spends a lot of time on the editing part. I love the, the filming can take a while depending on the length of the video, like houseplant tours and stuff take so long to edit because you have to physically input the plant name and stuff into the video. So longer videos and the more that you edit into it to make it like a pretty nice video. It took me three days to edit that video. And if these companies think that I'm gonna make a dedicated video for them, for $50, I mean, that's that's like such a low ball offer. It's not even funny. Like, no, it could take me a day to film it, a day to edit it, and then to like film it. And then not only that, but I have to learn their product, right? I have to test it out and use it. And they may be so specific in what they're asking you to say. Like I have to say certain things and I'm just like, I'm someone who's honest and I'm not gonna promote something just to get a little bit of coin, you know? If it's something that I personally wouldn't use and I personally wouldn't recommend, then I'm not gonna advertise it just to get a little bit of coin. I'm just, I don't know, I've just always been that way. I'm just upfront and honest about things and I don't know, and it just bugs me when I see these companies, like people promoting these companies that they're just getting the product from. And especially when you have an influencer, I'm like really heated about this, especially when you have an influencer that people look up to and they like see what they're using, they wanna use it, right? Or they just like trust what they have to say. So these companies are basically getting free advertising by just sending somebody a little bit of a product, like a grow light bulb or something simple as that, that I can literally go and buy myself and they want me to promote them for free. Like you can't, you can't get a commercial for free. You can't have that spot in that advertisement without paying, you know, money to them. So they're basically using these like micro influencers as like their advertising. Oh, let me send you this product and just post about it. And some of these companies are getting so specific. I had someone reach out and want me to do a YouTube, dedicated YouTube video, a full dedicated YouTube video for absolutely free. They just wanted to send me the product and they had this huge file. They sent me all about their product to know about it. And they asked me to make a video completely for free. And this was a pretty large company too. And I see other, I've seen a couple other YouTubers promote them and I wonder if they ask them to make a video for free because that is not okay. For a company that specializes in a product and they're pretty well known to ask people to make a free video for them, to promote them, just to receive the product, I, it just makes me feel another way about the company and like, it turns me off in a way that I don't ever like wanna promote them because the way that they're 
basically getting like free advertisement. And I wish more people would stand up to these companies. I honestly do because it's not right. They should get paid for promoting them. It's just something I'm very, very vocal about. Look at those fluval roots. Isn't that cool? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let my camera battery, um, it's overheating a little bit because it's been running a while. So I'm going to come back here in a little bit once that kind of cools down. So on like the whole, like working with brand deals, I'm just a little bit more cautious now because a lot of them try to throw in stuff like emails I'll get about content rights and they want like all this extra stuff and they just don't want to pay you for it. So I feel like I just am not someone to jump at every deal I get. If I do work with a company, it's going to be, I just feel like it's just got to be something worth my time and I got to like the product. They got to like pay me a decent amount of money. I feel like if they want me to work with them just for all the time and effort, it goes into making content. It's just something I'm not going to do for free. I will not do it anymore ever again. I learned my, I learned from those two companies I worked with back in the day and two isn't very many. And yeah, I didn't get paid for any of that. I just got the product. And again, they were $20 or less, you know, so just not worth my time anymore. Yeah. They just, they just basically want to use my platform, my audience, and they want me to promote their stuff. I don't really get too many like Instagram or TikTok promotions. It's mostly for YouTube that I get in my emails. And at this point I've like, literally I've stopped replying back to people because it's mostly for just product. They don't want to pay. And whenever I do email or reply back to them, I, they usually lowball me. Well, this is the first time working with you. We have to build trust and we'll do, we can start here, but then they throw in all this extra stuff that they want. And there was another lady that reached out that, so I gave her like my rate card and she hit me back with a low ball number and she was so rude too. She was just like, oh, our neighbor was outside. And she was just like, um, she wanted me to like full on go into an agreement with them without even giving me any of the contract de details. I'm like, what? I'm not going to sign a contract or do anything without knowing the details of the contract. I was just very puzzled by that whole communication. I don't know. It's just, I definitely feel like it's just a whole different ball game. And I know that's where bulk of the money comes from when like being an influencer and a content creator is working with brand deals. But for me, I have not had the best luck with companies at all. And <laughs> it is what it is. So I'm basically just relying on YouTube um, AdSense right now for most of my income, which isn't a lot. And so it's kind of got me thinking into like next year, like what, this is a uh, Soul Soils mix that I'm using by the way. And so next year, I'm just like, I feel like, so I need to make more money, first of all. And I just need to figure out another way. And I'm very happy and thankful for, you know, you guys. And I know like my channel has grown. I think I have like 13,000 something followers now. And I'm very thankful for you guys and what I am making through YouTube AdSense and all of you guys that watch my videos all the way through. and likes my posts, my videos, and engages with me. It all helps the algorithm out and it just ensures that people like my videos and if people like my videos and watch my videos, then hopefully they will get shown to more people. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be able to do this right now, but I know like long-term, I don't know if my channel doesn't grow that much and like people don't watch my content and then I'm not like making anything. So, um, it's definitely, it's definitely been challenging. Definitely. I mean, my husband and I have definitely taken, taken a hit for sure. I mean, we did buy a house this year, which is expensive buying a house and everything that comes with that and me taking a huge pay cut and we are just very, tight on what we spend money on basically. And it hasn't been easy. It's been a challenge. And you know, my husband's been kind of putting, like he's been supportive with 
with me and this, like he knows this is what I like wanted to do and I've been able to, you know, just do this full time right now, which I'm very appreciative of, but long term, it's not really, unless I continue to gain and grow, it's not really sustainable, which I've kind of been like stressing about because if I do find part-time work, I would have to find something from home so I can still like film and edit. And if I do find part-time work, it's gonna be less time that I have into putting content creation together because it is a full-time job. Because I do, I'm like pretty much so active on Instagram that Instagram alone is a job in itself. And then adding in YouTube and everything, it's a lot of work and it's a full-time job. And you just, you have to be active all the time and show up and, even on days that you don't really feel like it, I still, like, I have not, in this whole time I've been active and started, like, doing this full time over a year, I have not had, like, an inactive day. I've posted every single day and showed up in my stories every single day. And, you know, I love doing it, don't get me wrong, like, I love it, but, you know, some days I don't always feel like showing up or putting a face on and, and that's okay, you know, things happen and I try to be there and I try to help and show up for people. So yeah, it's definitely been, it's been a challenge. It hasn't been easy by any means. And, and yeah, I don't really make a lot of money. I know a lot of people, I don't know if people like to talk about like their finances or whatever, but it's not a, it's not a lot of money, at least not what I'm making. So yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do come 2023. I definitely wanna continue doing this full time, but I also need like another source of income basically. I don't really, I don't really have any other experience other than nursing, like I, that's my only degree. And I definitely cannot go back to the bedside. I mean, I enjoyed the 10 years I was a nurse, but I, I just can't go back to doing that again. I could find something from home part-time, but again, I mean, I just, it's just something I don't even wanna do anymore. So I don't know, I'm just gonna see how it goes. And I actually thought about um, making a second channel and getting into, so I'm so like niche down into houseplants, which houseplants, I'm always gonna do houseplant videos and I'm always gonna have plants and I don't know eventually what I wanna do with houseplants maybe like selling plants in the future. I really don't know. I mean, all that takes money if I were to start a business with it and that's not something I'm anywhere near close to being able to do. I don't know, I just feel like I want to like niche out a little bit and do some other things. You know, 10 years ago, I wanted to do a like beauty channel and so I might start a second channel and do like, um, makeup, skincare, stuff like that. Because I feel like for my age, there's not really many like influencers, I guess, in that area. So I have my pole in here and I'm putting all the cuttings like on the front side of the pole, basically down in here. And so yeah, basically I feel like I want to maybe like branch out. I, I don't wanna do anything that's not plant related on this channel. I would rather keep, you know, this one strictly just about plants and then maybe start a new channel on like beauty, makeup, um, lifestyle, and then maybe start like a whole new like Instagram and TikTok and do like a completely different niche on the side with this one. Obviously I wouldn't, I would be starting from zero, starting from scratch, you know, wherever I, whatever I decide to do, which, it's definitely fine. I mean, I could definitely do it on the side with what I'm doing now. Again, it would be a lot of work, you know, starting a whole nother niche. And I don't know if it's something I wanna do. I'm just kind of like throwing that idea out there because I feel like, like with the plant community, there's only so many companies to work with, right? And I feel like I've already burned some bridges with some companies that have reached out to me. And I just feel like with like makeup, skincare, there's so many other like companies, there's so many companies to work with and that would be like willing to pay you. And I just feel like with houseplants and what I'm finding with companies that have reached out to me, there's not many companies that are willing to pay you, which is kind of sad. And I don't know like what it's like in other niches. 
but I'm just finding with like house plants in general, they're just companies that have reached out to me, just, I don't know. <laughs> it's not what I envisioned or expected, I guess. I always thought when I would get like a brand partnership on YouTube that it would be like, because you see like other plant tubers and stuff doing this full time and it's like, I know what I'm making, so I don't know like how much other people are making, but I know the views I get roughly compared to like other channel views. And yeah, it's, definitely, it's, it's hard to try not to compare. I'm trying not to compare, but it's like, I know other people do this full time and can make it work. So I'm hoping one day I can get there. It's definitely, been a challenge, you know, like I said, but I'm hoping I can get to do this like full time and actually make a living out of it, but we'll see. I might start a whole new niche and do it on the side because I have to get ready. When I film, you know, I could just film me getting ready and film like little short reels of like makeup and skincare and stuff and maybe I could grow in another niche and actually make a living doing something besides plants. So who knows? I don't really know. I enjoy content creation. Like I like, I like being active. I like being on here. And I feel like, I feel like with my age too, like I'm creeping up to 40, I'll be 37 in January. So I feel like there's not really, I feel like there needs to be more influencers in that like 35 plus age range, you know? I don't know, whenever I see somebody who's in their early 20s promoting skincare products, I don't know, I just feel, no knowing, like no shade at, at all. I just feel like, I don't know. Somebody in their 50s is probably not going to be as tempting, tempted to buy something from like somebody in their like early 20s who hasn't really shown any signs of aging, you know? <laughs> I don't know. That's just my thought on that. I didn't mean that to be like offensive or anything. So yeah, it's just a lot to think about. I just feel like with moving this year and then for those that, someone asked me on my channel in a comment a while back about they saw a dog in some of my older videos and they wondered what happened. But yes, we had a St. Bernard for 12 years. Well, almost 12, he was, he was 11, almost 12 and he passed away this year. After we moved, it was about six weeks after we moved and it was really hard. And yeah, it was it was very hard. We, we loved him so much. His name was Max. And you know, for a St. Bernard, he lived to be pretty old and he had a good life. It's sad that, you know, that happened, but it is okay. We've had actually cats before, these cats too that we had to put down. One lived to be, we actually had two cats when we first got together. This was in 2004. Yeah, 2004 when we first lived together and we had two cats um, as a Christmas present. And one lived to be, one we had to put down at seven and one was lived to be 14. And so these cats were the cats that we got after we put our 14 year old cat down. So we've had, I mean, we've lost pets before and we like have been through that. And you know, it, it's hard losing a pet. It was our first dog together. So that in itself was definitely harder to do. But it's okay. I don't know if we'll get another dog eventually. My husband, I would say my husband is more of the dog person than I am. I mean, I love all animals and I love dogs. Um, I feel like I've always just been a little bit more of a cat person and he never had cats before he met me. And he loves cats now too, but I don't know. I don't know if another dog is in our future or not, but we will see. So yeah, it's just been, it's just been a lot to think about like, I am making a huge mess this the whole past year. It's just been a whole whirlwind. I feel like with my Instagram growing, focusing on doing this full time and moving and just so many changes all at once. And yeah, it's been a lot. It's been, an, it's been a crazy year. And I don't know where 2023 is gonna lead. I don't know if, you know, what's gonna happen in my plant career, if I'm still gonna be doing what I'm doing a year from now, of course, I'm gonna be so thankful for that. If I can grow in another niche and 
then that would be awesome too. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else I would be interested in doing besides social media and plants because I just feel like nothing else really interests me, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I would love to like grow and sell plants one day and maybe do something or have a plant shop. But again, that's like, I'm no way near ready. And yeah, like I said, with like my husband's job, he does mortgage um, loans and stuff. And with the economy right now, it's been hard for him too, cause he hasn't been getting as much work. And yeah, we're, we're hanging in there. We're doing okay. It's been, it's been a rough year in some aspects with everything, but yeah, we're hanging in there. Yeah, so I think Really just for next year, I just wanna to continue to be here, continue to grow and just be a part of this community. If I do branch out into another niche, you know, that will probably take a whole like year to start growing, I imagine. It would be a whole lot of work in itself, but if I could at least start, you know, you have to start, right? Cause I didn't start back then when I wanted to, and who knows where that could have led if I had started like 10 years ago, you know? I could be, who knows, you know? You can't, it's one of like my biggest advice is like, you don't know what's gonna happen unless you start. You have to start somewhere. So just start and you may not like the content at first that you put out, you may not, it may not do well, but eventually, you know, the more you, put out there, the more you are just honest with yourself and honest with your audience and, you know, the more people will follow and you'll start to grow. Other than that, for like 2023, we don't really have like any, any plans. It'll be our 15th wedding anniversary, which I would love to go on a trip, but I don't know if it will be possible next year. We want to go to Hawaii. That's where we want to go. Um, we both, neither one of us have been and we have been like dying to go. I don't really see like too much else like happening in 2023. I'm just excited to continue being here and continue growing. And yeah, it's just, I just love being here so much and I'm just really thankful and fortunate for every one of you guys. So thank you guys for being here. Let me show you the plant before we end this chatty long video. So this is what I have going on. So you can see I put the several of the cuttings down in front of the pole and I have that main vine kind of in the center going up. And yeah, it's probably gonna take a little while. I have to water this yet and I put my slow release Osmico in here. It's probably gonna take a while to start climbing. It, I usually feel like once the roots, I should have used my mycorrhizal inoculants. I didn't think about that. Ugh, oh well. I can maybe sprinkle some on top. I actually might go do that before I water this. I'll sprinkle some on top and water them in. And yeah, I imagine it shouldn't take too long to start climbing. Normally it takes like several weeks to just get situated in the pot and then it'll start climbing more. But I'm happy I took care of this guy cause it was just something I've been meaning to do for a while. And that's why I kind of propped and chopped him so I could have several vines growing up. And it is a pretty cool plant once it starts climbing. I do, it's a very like slender leaf, I guess. I don't know, <laughs> but it is a pretty cool plant and I'm excited to see it climbing. So yeah, I'm really glad I took care of this. So thank you guys so much for listening to this chatty, very, very chatty repot. I've been meaning to film one of these and just for those that are new or just wanted to know a little bit more about me, I hope you like learned something new about me. So yeah, my goal is basically, I wanna try and go, I wanna try and do some lives and I might like branch out and do another niche. But as far as like, YouTube content, I'm still gonna be like doing the same things, repottings and vlogs and plant shopping videos, plant chores, all that. Nothing like with my channel is gonna change. I'm just gonna continue putting out like the same content and if there's anything else that you guys, you know, wanna see from me, definitely let me know. And yeah, I'm just excited to keep filming. I love filming and doing this and I'm just excited to see where my account will be like a year from now. And hopefully I can keep growing and being here cause you guys are awesome. And I just love, I just love being able to do this right now. So thank you guys so much. I want you guys to leave a comment down below of one of your like planty goals for 2023. I'm actually curious what you guys have for 
like this coming year and what you have planned with your plants or something that you want to do I'm just curious and I would love to like hear more about that so leave me a comment and let me know so I can read through them and yeah thank you so much for being here and watching and listening I appreciate you guys and I'm just excited to continue doing this and being here and yes thank you so I will talk to you guys soon